Now let's take a look at performing binary arithmetic, and specifically we'll look at just addition and subtraction. Uh, but arithmetic with binary numbers is not all too difficult, but it's good to kind of walk through it step by step just to get used to this notion of when we build a circuit to perform math for us, we have constraints that are, you know, that are put upon us based upon the fact that we're going to build the circuit and that's the only circuit that we get. And the most specific case of this is when we perform addition, you know, we think about adding binary numbers as 0, 1, 1 plus 1, 1, 1, and we just 1 plus 0, uh, we add these things together, and the, the result might be bigger than the number of bits that we had right there, or we will allow a, a, a number that's bigger than, than these numbers to come in. But when we start building the circuit, we start having to have this whole n-bit concept where we are going to build an adder, for example, but it's only going to be 4 bits, or it's only going to be 8 bits. Okay, so it's only going to be 16 bits, whatever you decide it's going to be. So we need to figure out ways to handle when numbers come in and they are larger than can be placed into the n bits that we have in the circuits. Okay? So it's, it's not a difficult concept, but it's, it's, you've got to keep it in mind. So let's start with addition. And let's just start with the most basic thing, which is we're going to do binary addition. And if you think about it, we're going to do single bit addition. And let's just start by saying 0 plus 0. And let's see what we have here. So 0 plus 0 is going to be a 0. And 0 plus 1 is going to be a 1. And 1 plus 0 is going to be a 1. And then 1 plus 1 is equal to, well, actually, the sum of this doesn't fit into a single position. So what we actually do is we say this is a binary number. It can only take on a 0 and a 1. So I'm out of room in this least significant position. So I say I have a 0 with what we call a carry. So a carry is where we bring on a, the next higher order position in order to accommodate the number that we have. Okay? So th the reason that's important is because when you perform addition, you're going to perform, uh, you're going to have one circuit that does the sum, and then you're going to have another circuit that does the carry. If I actually laid that out and said, okay, I want to build a single bit adder, we know that we need a sum and we know that we need a carry. Notice that the sum and carry would never have any other values other than these. So we only need one bit for the carry, but we could go in there and say that we didn't have a carry there, we didn't have a carry there, and we didn't have a carry there. So what would this look like? What if we said it's A plus B, and we listed out A and B in a truth table, and we said, okay, well, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and let's do the sum, we'll call it S, and we had 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, zero, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 0, and then I had a carry, which I had right there. So then in all these other situations, I had a 0. If you really look at this, the sum could be accomplished with an exclusive OR gate, and the carry could be accomplished with a AND gate, an AND gate. So, but remember that the AND gate that needed to exist, it had to exist prior to actually doing the arithmetic. So we had to know how many bits we needed. So we couldn't have accommodated a three-bit input. We had to know that up front. So when you perform multiple bit addition, the way that that is accomplished is you start at the least significant position and you carry into the next higher order position. So let's take a look at that. So let's go 1, 0, 1, 0, dot 1. And then let's add it to 1, 1, 1, 0, dot 1. So we're going to perform binary addition. And we're going to say, OK, 1 plus 1 is 0 with a carry. So we had a carry immediately. Well, now we're already at a situation where even our adder over here didn't work because now we have three inputs. So we need to kind of think about what is the sum when we, cre when we have three inputs. Now, as we propagate from right to left or from the least significant to the most significant, we are in a situation where three inputs really is the most we're ever going to have. So if I came over here, let's just jot this down and just just to kind of keep it straight of what we're doing. Now I'm going to have this whole concept of A, B, and C. And let's call, let's just say C is the carry. And let's add them together, and we'll have a sum, and, let's, and then we'll have a carry. We'll call it a carry out. And let's just put all the possible codes together and see what these sums are going to be, just to keep it straight so we know what it is going forward. Okay? So we're going to have 
all zeros added together is a zero. Zero plus zero plus one is a one. Zero plus one plus zero is a one. Zero plus one plus one is a zero with a carry. One plus zero plus zero is a zero. One plus zero plus one is, is uh, oh excuse me, this is a one. So that's a one. And then one plus zero plus one is a zero with a carry. And then one plus one plus zero is zero with a carry. And then one plus one plus one is actually one with a carry. So this was the unique case that we had there. So when we'd actually have a sum of one with a carry. So let's keep that in mind as we do this. So now we're going to come along and go one plus zero plus zero is going to be simply one with no carry. And then we come over here and we got one plus one, it's zero with a carry. And then we had one plus zero plus one, that is also zero with a carry. And then you had one plus one plus one, that is going to be one with a carry. So now when you talk about the sum and the carry, you don't necessarily say that the answer to this was 11001.0. What you say is that we had a 5-bit sum, which represents the two inputs, the arguments to the sum. And the result, the sum, is also going to be 5 bits. And so we'd say that the sum in this situation would be 1001.0, and it had a carry. Now, this does beg the question of, well, how big could the sum ever be? Well, let's take a look at, let's do another example where you added, let's just do two four-bit numbers. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And let's put two values together that are the largest numbers you could absolutely ever have in this case. So this would be a decimal 15, and this would be a decimal 15. And we kind of know that the sum of that is going to be decimal 30. But let's see how many bits it takes to represent 30. So let's go 1 plus 1 is 0 with a carry. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1 with a carry. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1 with a carry. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1 with a carry. So the situation here was that the answer was 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. But we had a 4-bit sum, so we say that we had the sum was 1, 1, 1, 0 and with a carry. Now what's nice about this is 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 is actually 30. But what's nice about this is that this represents the largest number we would ever have. So the sum can fit for an n bit sum. We can say that it fits into an n plus 1 result. But then again, we handled that plus 1 by having a dedicated circuit, and we call it the carry. So this is just to kind of illustrate that when you build these circuits, you have to really track where the bits are going and know how many bits are you're ever going to have in the input to an art into an operation. Okay, let's look at a uh, at subtraction and let's introduce the anal or kind of the opposite of a carry, which is going to be what we call a borrow. Okay, so in binary subtraction, let's go ahead and list out our uh, list out our values here. So this is subtraction, and let's go ahead and say. 0 minus 0. So 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 1 is, well shoot, we have a problem here because the top, which is called the minuend, and is not the same value or the same magnitude or greater than the bottom, which is called the subtrahend. So what we need to do here is we need to borrow from a higher order position in order to make the minuend larger. Okay. So what we would do here is we would say, I need a borrow. So I'm going to borrow from a higher order position. Now, we don't have it in here, but we just say that a borrow occurred. And what that allows us to do is make this a 1, 0. Now, 1, 0 minus 1 is actually going to have a result of 1. And if to prove that to yourself, 1, 0 in binary is 2 in decimal. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Now, what we would say here is that we had a subtraction or a difference of one with a borrow. Okay. Now let's continue. We'll have one minus zero. That's simply one. And then you'll have one minus one, which is a zero. So what's interesting about this is if you look at this, this is still an exclusive OR gate, and we can cover that. Uh, we can talk about that later. Okay. So now we do the same type of thing when we do multiple bit subtraction. We start at the least significant position and we work our way to the higher order position. And we do these subtractions. Uh, we have to include the borrows uh, as we go. So let's go ahead and do an example. Let's do this example where we had 1, 0, 1, 1, dot 0. 
and we're going to subtract from it 0, 1, 0, 0, dot 1. So we start off at the least significant position, and we say 0 minus 1, and immediately we need to borrow. Okay? So what we have to do is say, I'm going to borrow from this higher order position, that makes that a 0, and that will make this now 1, 0. So we can say 1, 0 minus 1 is now a 1. So that's the least significant difference bit. Okay, then we go 0 minus 0 is a 0. 1 minus 0, we can do that one. That's going to be a 1. Then we need 0 minus 1, we need to borrow. So what we need to do is borrow from this position in order to make this menu end larger than the substrahand. So we have 1 minus or 1, 0 minus 1, and that's simply going to be 1. And then we have 0 minus 0. So the difference in this situation is 0, 1, 1, 0, dot 1. And notice that in this situation we had n is equal to 5. Well, this is n is equal to 5, but we had no borrow. Okay? So the way that we handle this is just like in, in addition, we talk about a carry out. Well, in this one we have really a carry or excuse me, a borrow in. So it represents, so there's some circuit out here which is going to provide the borrow. And all we do is we just say, if we ever had a borrow, just assert that so we know. And this is nothing more than just a separate circuit, just like the carry was. Okay, if you wanted to have an example where I needed a borrow in, let's do, let's do the same example, except let's make it a 1011.0, and let's make it a 1100.1. So in this situation, I would have 0 minus 1 is, uh, shoot, I need to borrow. So I'm going to go borrow from here, make that a 0, make this a 1, 0. 1, 0 minus 1 is going to be a 1. 0 minus 0 is going to be a 0. 1 minus 0 is a 1. Now I need to borrow here, so I'm going to borrow here, and I'm going to make that a 1, 0. So I've got 1, 0 minus 1, and that's going to be a 1. And we're in the same situation, except we finally get to here, I got 0 minus 1. I need a borrow. There is no borrow. So what we say is that we had a borrow in. So a circuit out here was asserted. And that allowed us to cause this to go to a 1, 0. And that allowed us to complete the subtraction. So 1, 0 minus 1 would be a 1. So the answer here is that the difference is 1, 1, 1, 0 dot 1 with a borrow. Okay? So we're always stating the difference in terms of the number of bits that was in the input arguments and then we say we either had a borrow or not a borrow. And again this is just to get used to this whole concept of when we say with a borrow it, it means it's a separate circuit. Okay? But the circuit we built for the difference and also for the sum those are going to be the same number of bits as are in the input arguments.